Hi everybody, thank you so much for your time. So in this session, I'm going to share with you some updates from Presonus Studio One, especially what's going on for Studio One Prime. Okay, they have this continue that. But also I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you some of the common DAW, digital audio workstations that we commonly use and popular in the market and give some of my personal experience with those um, software so that can help you to choose the one that suits your workflow and suits your music style. So let's begin by uh, give you some updates on PreSonus Studio One. So for those of you who actually notice, Studio One now becomes Studio One Pro 7, Studio One Pro Plus. Okay, so these two. Now what is the difference? In fact, they have actually taken out Studio One Prime. So no longer you will be able to download Studio One Prime for free. Okay. Now, if for those of you previously who have already downloaded um, Studio One, uh, up to six Studio One Prime, okay, six, you can still continue to use, no problem, but you will not be able to upgrade to the uh, Studio One 7. So from seven onwards, they would, I'm not sure, eight, whether they will come out with the Prime version, but at least for now, there's no Prime version. So you will have to go and buy uh, Studio One Pro 7 if you want to use it. But I am, I must say, they have made it quite affordable, actually. There are a lot of features that you can use. And for those of you who are not using a Mac, um, this is actually quite a good software. In fact, they have evolved quite a lot since version 1. I had their version 3 previously, and now it's like version 7. They have made so much um, improvement along the way. You can do your recording, editing. They have made it so good in terms of different mixing. In fact, I mean, for most of my videos, tutorial you see from Studio One Prime, I've used that uh, to teach as well. So you can use it for many things, uh, mastering, even live performance. They have quite a good uh, track, uh, chord tracks and all that. You can create a lot of things. And very importantly, it's not expensive actually. So if you compare with things that uh, you can do with Studio One, this is not expensive. So let me quickly go through with you what are the plans that they have. Now, a disclaimer, um, all these uh, software that I'm sharing with you they don't pay me, okay? I don't earn the uh, advertisement from them. It's just that I'm using them to teach and I find that uh, this is good software, okay? So Studio One, uh, Presonus doesn't pay me. If they pay me, I'll be glad to you know <laughs> promote for them as well. But no, they don't pay me. So they have the Pro 7, which is a one-time perpetual license. You pay 1999 and this is just for Pro 7. So there's no annual fee. There's no upgrade uh, capability. You just stick with your Pro 7. There is another one, which is the annual 170, okay, 180 uh, USD. That is for your annual uh, license. But this is good because it has all the extra things that you need and it comes with a lot of um, software as well, the plugged in that you can use, and it comes with auto updates as well. Now, for those of you who actually plan to use Studio One, continue to uh, learn and make music, I find the monthly plus is very affordable, $20 USD a month, uh, which goes out to probably about $24 uh, sing dollar, which is very affordable for a software that has a lot of features so it is really really good and if you are considering i find it presonus is still one of the most um, uh, affordable option if you are using windows this is definitely a good one okay now so um yeah so that is for studio one moving on let me go to cubase cubase is also one of the software that i have used uh, to teach as well in my early days. Now, this is very similar if uh, for those of you who have used Cubase before, this is very similar in terms of the layout and then uh, in terms of what they can do. Uh, so this is kind of like the early days 
uh, Studio One. So because some of the uh, engineer from Studio One actually came from Cubase in the early days. Of course, now they they are they are very good at uh, their own interface and all that. But Cubase pretty much very good in terms of audio recording, in terms of editing a lot of shortcuts and very friendly, and their quality. The, the plug-in from them is pretty much very good and high quality. I've used them. Uh, but of course, I think uh, one of the one of the downside from my experience was really the setup. In the early days, it's quite difficult to set up in terms of like even installing the audio interface. It's also quite, uh, it's quite troublesome, I would say. But other than that, I'm, re I'm pretty happy with uh, a lot of features and the way they 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 come up with their flow the workflow is pretty much quite uh, amazing okay now if you buy an audio interface like um, this one evo 4 evo 4 has the cubase element versions which you can download it for free so you can try that and i find that this is very good now one of the drawback that i find that um from Cubase is the price with $99 you are getting only the LE um, Cubase element and if you are to use the artist versions you are paying $329 that will equals to probably about $700 sing dollar, which is very expensive and if you are going to go for the pro you are paying about $1,002 something yeah, so which is very expensive. But of course, you can see their comparison. Um, you know, there are quite a lot of good things that you can use. But of course, again, uh, individually, I find that it's good, high quality uh, in terms of their uh, features, their process, their workflow, a lot of things that you can also use. They also have chord pads and chord track. They are one of the earlier ones to come out with this chord track, even before uh, Presonus or uh, Logic, I think. They are the one of the few that come out with the chord track assistant. So this is really um, industrial standard, I would say. So you can consider if you want to go for them. The next one is Ableton Live. This is a very exciting uh, DAW because um, especially if you are doing EDM, electronic dance music. This is very handy. The workflow is a little different. It took me a while to learn because in a traditional way, we always do recording and the layout is kind of like the, from left to right. But this one is a little different. The layout is uh, on the right and then you have a different interface uh, in, in, in terms of how they arrange the sound, how they make um, their, their workflow. It's a uh, learning curve for me but nonetheless because of the flexibility it is really good in manipulate your sound sample your loops come up with different ideas play around with, uh, with different ideas especially if you have like an uh, example if you have a midi controller or midi pad and this is very handy for um, ableton live drawback for me again uh, is quite expensive uh, even though you know the intro it's only $99 is quite a heavy stuff and it only gives you like uh, 8 tracks input output and uh, 16 audio and MIDI track that's it uh, of course if you can uh, if you want to go for the uh, standard it costs you 400 plus and then for the live suite is 700 plus okay now uh, if you are working on electronic music this is definitely a, a good uh, software okay now having said that i remember there is another one called fl studio this is very similar to um live ableton live but it's easier to use and it actually has a lot of sequencer so they are very famous in their sequencing feature where you can generate beats very quickly the workflow is absolutely easier uh, i've used them in the early days as well you can also record vocals but i find that the really the parts that where they shine is really their sequences it's very easy to use and they have a lot of uh, plugged in a lot of virtual instruments and their price is also not expensive comparably uh, you see from here 
they have the fruity which is $99 producers $179 signatures and then for all the plugged in now $99 is a one time fees um, so but it gives you a lot of effects and audios okay so this one it really you can consider if you are doing electronic music as well so either this um, FL Studio or the Ableton Live now the next thing will be um, Pro Tools okay so this is one of the earliest um, DAW in the market a lot of big studios recording studio they are still using uh, Pro Tools they have a uh, entire ecosystem to support the big studios a lot of big studios are, are using Pro Tools now a uh, good thing about them is I like the way you edit the audio very intuitive fast and also flexible one thing that I find that the drawback is they are not very strong in their MIDI okay so that that's part where uh, I think the rest of the um, software like Presonus, Cubase, Cubase is also very strong in MIDI and this is also similar pricing $99, $299 and $599 you have a free one that you can use but only gives you 8 tracks okay 8 audio and 8 MIDI tracks and these are the instruments that you can do you can have so you can try um, download and play around it's also fairly easy to use of course um, there are some learning curve but I think overall it is still a very good software uh, for Pro Tools okay now next moving on my favorite Logic Pro before Logic Pro uh, let's talk about GarageBand if you are a Mac user literally when you buy a Mac it comes with GarageBand you don't need to spend additional um, money and go and buy software this is already there for you you just need to download from Apple um, Mac um, store and then it supports um, your Mac it also supports the iPhone and uh, iPad as well so it is pretty much very good interface where you can record, you can do your MIDI. They are very good in the MIDI. There are a lot of instruments that you can choose from. They also have their AI drummer for you to do up the drum. So this is definitely a good start. And the interface is very easy to use. So, so you can see from here, this is a drummer where it plays the drum for you. You can choose different types of drummer and it will help you to play then you can do the rest of the instruments you can do uh, they have a very good um, pad synthesizer they have a lot of different different uh, different different instruments and i find that among all this is the easiest of course there are limitations when it comes to editing because uh, GarageBand being GarageBand the ultimate goal is for the user to use Logic Pro industrial standard for those of you who heard about logic pro definitely even their stock plug-in it's already very high quality you can literally create a song um, just by using the stock uh, instruments the stock plug-in high quality stuff everything is there for you even with the latest update with the keyboard player drum player the bass player the drum player i love it absolutely for me keyboard is not my main instrument so it really helps me a lot to create um, the whole entire songs uh, with the virtual piano player the drummers the bass everything is there so it's really really good and they also have this stem splitter if you want to you know for example you have a song so you want to split out the vocals to practice you can use that um, to 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 make it work and you have the the chroma the pitch corrections is there and as a uh, uh, the the bass uh, built-in feature there you don't need to spend additional of course the price is 299 make it 300 sing dollar so it's still quite expensive but with all the features I find that this is really worth invest if you have budget okay now um, that's all I think so we have gone through studio one Cubase Ableton Pro Tools Logic GarageBand and Fruit Fruity Loop in the early days but now they call themselves FL Studio so I hope this is helpful I'll see you next round see you then bye bye